are you arrogant? Is a question that I'm asking you this afternoon. Hey, if a French person calls you arrogant, then seriously, you need to take a long, hard look in the mirror, don't you? Is there such a thing as a national character? Are the English arrogant? This week, the Scottish rugby legend Jim Telfer said that the New England players are in danger of being arrogant. And then today, this from Jean Jaff a French journalist talking to the BBC about David Beckham's deal to play in Paris and the Beckham brand. I don't think the French are very taken by the Beckham's brand. You know, I've never seen many ads with Beckham in France in magazines or on the Paris Metro. I mean, apparently uh, his wife was a bit snooty and she didn't want to come to Paris. It was not good enough for a career. Most of the English people, they think you are the centre of the world <laughs> and uh, we, 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 we yeah. have to, to care about what happened in this country and we have to love you. English. And I, I don't <laughs> say the British. English. There you go. So, you think you're the centre of the world. You're arrogant. You think that everybody should bow down before you. I mean, he's got a point, hasn't he? Uh, 08453 text 81333 and start your message with WM this afternoon. Now, as he said that, he was only talking about the English. He doesn't have an issue with the British as a whole, not the Scots, not the Welsh, not those from Northern Ireland, just the English. So is he right? Do the English have a, an unfounded sense of your own importance, 08453 Or maybe other countries have a bit of a, an inferiority complex when it comes to England. Stuart Parr is a UKIP councillor in Telford and has been at the forefront of the campaign for a separate English parliament. Uh, Stuart, good afternoon. Afternoon. So what makes us so special, Stuart? Uh, what makes us so special? I don't think we're any more special than any other country. I don't think we're any more jingoistic or arrogant than any other country. I think there's a lot to be proud of. Um, like you know, what? England's, England's achieved a lot in the past. You know, we, 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 English common law is the legal basis for so many countries around the world. The English democracy system, you know, the Westminster system is used around the world. OK, a lot of the democracy we spread around was at gunpoint or knife point, but, you know, things have changed. Uh, in recent times, I think we set a good example, generally, to the rest of the world. I think we've achieved a lot. Yeah. What have, what, of. Without sounding like Janet Jackson, though, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> what have we done lately? Ah, uh, OK. It's it, like, <laughs> yeah. It's a struggle, isn't it? <laughs> well, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big old world now, and yeah. I think it's more about people now than countries. Now, in the... In the past, things were attributed to, be cut to countries. The English did this, the French did this, the Spanish mm-hmm. did this. I think nowadays it's more about the individuals. This person's done done things rather than the country they come from. Do you consider they yourself? Do you, yeah. <laughs> do you consider yourself to be English or British? English. I used to feel that way. I used to feel both. You know, equally so. But as time's gone on, I I just feel English now. I don't feel British. Too. What's What's changed? Um, well, you know, sort of my eyes got opened um, a few years ago to just the way this country works and it's become even more discriminatory towards English people. We're the only country in Europe that doesn't have its own government. You know, how can that be right? The Scots mm. have got their own government, the Welsh have got their own government, the Northern Irish, even London's got its own government now. You know, but there's no national devolution for England. We're not politically recognised. Um, we're not particularly legally recognised either. We've got no government. Cornwall, the Isle of Man, the Channel Islands, they have more international representation than the whole of England does. The British British Irish Council is a good example. Um, you know, the British government, the Scottish, Welsh, Northern Irish, the, the Republic, government of the Republic of Ireland, the Channel Islands, the Isle of Man, and even observer status for Cornwall, which is a county. Yeah, England as a whole is unrepresented. Let me just play the clip to you again, uh, Stuart. Just have a listen to this again and just tell me what you make of it. I, I don't think the French are very taken by the br- Beckham's brand. You know, I've never seen many ads with Beckham in France in uh, magazines or on the Paris Metro. I mean, apparently uh, his wife was a bit snooty and she didn't want to come to Paris. It was not good enough for a career. 
most of the English people, they think you are the center of the world, <laughs> and uh, we, 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 we yeah. have to, to care about what happened in this country, and we have to love you. English, and I, I don't <laughs> say the British, English. What do you make of that, Stuart? <laughs> Bit of a rant, isn't it? Really, I mean, <laughs> you think? <laughs> you know, to be fair, he's, he's French. Um, I, I think. What do you mean by that? Uh, ar- to be ar- fair, I he's French. Ar- arrogance. Yeah. Uh, I think arrogance is something. You know, an accusation that could be equally levelled at the French, possibly even more. So, uh, I don't know if you've ever been to France, but you know, if you don't speak French, then they certainly don't treat you the same as if you do. And the interesting thing there, though, was that he was speaking English. I, I would, uh, I would, I would imagine that perhaps had the shoe been on the other foot, and it was an English journalist, maybe the English journalist might have been speaking, speaking English as well in English in a, yeah. in, a, you know, in, a in a dodgy no, you're right. in no, a I dodgy French the, accent, maybe like I, Joey I Barton. The, I don't think the education system encourages people to be more tolerant of you know of other cultures. Mm. Um, Fifty-six percent of Europeans speak a foreign language, and it's only thirty-eight percent in the UK. So that's quite it's arrogant, isn't it? Because we go, we go on holiday to arrogant. these places. It's not I arrogant. It's, I don't think that it's it's English people being arrogant and refusing to speak the language, but we don't start to learn. The education system doesn't start teaching us a foreign language until um, generally year eleven, the start of yeah. secondary school, which is around about the time where biologically the human brain stops being open to new language and starts concentrating on other things like, you know, fighting, hunting, killing saber-toothed tigers. Um, you know, whereas abroad, they, they teach people to... They teach children to speak a foreign language right from uh, from a young age. And, you know, obviously English TV, American TV, kind of makes it a bit more of a necessity or makes it more useful to them, I guess. Yeah. The, the journalist that we've just heard from, Stuart, was also asked about Joey Barton, you know, the uh, the French um, uh, accent that he put on, a Scouse footballer uh, speaking at a French news conference, putting on a rather bad French accent. You know, and and the journalist went, I, don't, I have no idea who you're talking about. And I, I think that maybe is a symptom of English arrogance as well, isn't it? That That assumption from our guys that this guy should know who Joey Barton was. Um, I guess, but then I suppose it's in the context of the sporting world and we do produce some of the the most well-known sporting personalities in the world. You know, it's, I'd, I wouldn't say I'd expect everybody in France or any other country to have heard of David Beckham or Joe Barton or someone like that, but we do produce, for such a small country, some of the most well-known sports personalities and the sports teams, in fact. You know, mm. Man United is like one of the biggest... And sports clubs and most widely supported teams in the world, um, teams like Chelsea and Liverpool. You know they've got sports clubs around the world, and and for such a small nation, and there's only 50 million of us, we're a tiny little dot on the map, really, when you look at it in in perspective. So uh, we do produce so many so many sports in personalities. So quickly, and just to wrap up, Stuart, do you think that other countries might be jealous and therefore reacting like this to us because of that? I don't think it's particularly jealousy I am I guess some people you know they may be jealous I think the French are probably less likely to be jealous of it's more uh, it's probably more so uh, our our (coughs) neighbours and uh, union partners for the last 300 years that might be slightly more jealous of English dominance of these islands but I don't I don't think the French are particularly